This video will show the process of creating a Windows Server 2019 virtual machine using OpenShift virtualization. We will start with our OpenShift cluster. This cluster is relatively small with a few other containerized and virtualized workloads running. Here we see a containerized guestbook application, a quaint relic of a bygone time using Redis and PHP. Moving to the NCC1701A namespace, we see there are some other virtual machines already running. The pods we see here represent the libvirt, qemu, and other container-based technologies being used to instantiate and manage our virtual machines. Moving to the virtual machines view, we get a more concise perspective of the virtual machines. If we were to look at the options for these by clicking the three dots on the right side, currently highlighted, we would see operations like start, stop, and delete for the virtual machines, standard management capabilities. Because OpenShift virtualization is Kubernetes-based, we have the option of defining the virtual machines using YAML. However, to illustrate the process, we will use the wizard for our Windows Server virtual machine. The first question asked by the wizard is the source of the virtual machine. The options here are to create a VM with no disk for pixie booting, use a URL to import a disk to a new volume, use a container image for the disk, or attach a new or existing PVC to the VM. For this demonstration, I'm going to select Disk. We will do this to use a pre-existing PVC, which has been pre-staged with the Windows operating system in order to save time. You can see a significantly accelerated version of importing the 40 gigabyte disk on the screen now. I'll pause briefly to highlight that this disk is being imported from a KVM-ready Windows image, which was created for OpenStack. The process is straightforward, relying on the standard Kubernetes persistent storage paradigm of persistent volume claims to request storage, which is then met by a storage class. With the source defined, we tell OpenShift virtualization which operating system we're using. I'm choosing to use a predefined virtual machine size of medium, which represents two vCPUs and eight gigabytes of RAM. This is a server workload, so we want to be sure to set the profile correctly. And last, for this screen, we will set the host name. The next screen of the wizard will ask us what network we want to connect to. Here we will select the administrator-defined external network for VLAN 14, which uses Multis to create the resources on each of the OpenShift nodes and connect the pods to an external network. The final step is to attach the pre-allocated disk. As with any other Kubernetes pod needing persistence, the disk is defined as a PVC with a storage class associated for dynamic provisioning. For Linux-based operating systems, we have the option of providing cloud init configuration here. We won't use this with our Windows virtual machine, however. With the virtual machine defined and created, we're ready to turn it on. The details for a powered off virtual machine are not terribly interesting, so we'll use the menu to power on the VM. After a few moments to create the virtual machine instance pod and allow Kubernetes to schedule it, we see the VM go from starting to running. At this point, we can use the built-in viewer to see the virtual machine console and wait for it to boot. After Windows has successfully booted, we can hand off to the security team for them to take ownership and deploy the application. Since this VM is connected directly to an external network, no Kubernetes service or OpenShift route needs to be defined to enable access. I hope this introduction to creating virtual machines with OpenShift virtualization has provided a provocative peek into what's to come. Thank you for attending.